Welcome to 2020! I had a bunch of IRL stuff to take care of, which is why it's been a while. I also have a bit of a cold, unfortunately, so apologies if I sound a bit off. Let's get to it. There was a Pokemon Direct recently that unveiled Game Freak's future plans. Instead of the cliched third version, they will pursue DLC, which will feature two expansions, Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra, both of which take place in new wild area type locations. I will get into the issues surrounding this momentarily, but first I want to share my thoughts from the Direct. Overall, it was surprisingly good. They did share a lot of new information and there is a significant amount of new content being added. New hairstyles with new colors, which is cool. New clothing options, like the Getsis patch, which I already have access to a year in advance. Shout out to the awesome Pokemon modding community. New bike outfit that is significantly more appealing than the default clown suit. I would still prefer a toggle to remove it if desired. New bike skins, cool. Not as cool as a car though. Still not a fan of Dyna slash Gigantamax, but there's new forms like Blastoise, who has acquired several brand new cannons and will use none of them. New Galar forms like Galarian Articuno. Concept art shows it shooting lasers out of its eyes. I'm positive it will shoot from everywhere but its eyes. New Pokemon that look pretty meh to me overall. New Celebi looks especially awful. New co-op play modes like traversing a Pokemon den. Hopefully it's not as disgustingly laggy as the wild area. New tutors with new attacks which is always exciting and helps to change up the meta. New items like the experience charm that seems to boost the mandatory experience share to help mitigate some grind in order to hyper train your Pokemon more easily. And finally, they will be adding an additional 200 Pokemon from past titles, bringing the total number up to a respectable 600 plus. As you can see, there's a lot they're adding here, and basically all of it is really good stuff. What's great about DLC is that it extricates you from having to suffer through Sword and Shield for a second time, since you can continue with the same save file, which is honestly a blessing in disguise. I'm currently attempting to complete a second run on a different Switch, and it's agonizing. The game has non-existent replayability, and the only motivation I have to complete this second playthrough is when I'm watching a movie so that I can spam click the A button while doing something much more productive. The DLC route is also cheaper than the alternative, which would have been a reskin of the same game for full price. The Sword and Shield expansion pass is half the price of a full game, coming in at $30 USD. Now let's get into some of the criticisms and concerns surrounding this news. The main issue people have with the DLC is that you have to pay more money, 90 USD total, for a proper Pokemon experience, when all of this stuff should have been in the base game from the very beginning. Sword and Shield is severely lacking in content. The game is bone dry, even more so than X and Y, which are considered to be very weak additions to the series content-wise. People feel that Game Freak withheld content and are now selling it back to them. For example, it was revealed that Leon has a mentor named Mustard, who is a central character in the upcoming Isle of Armor expansion. Leon is the undefeatable champion. Don't you think Mustard may have been instrumental in Leon being able to achieve such a title? I don't believe Mustard is seen or heard from at all in the main game. Despite being a seemingly vital character in Leon's development on his journey to becoming not only the best trainer in Galar, but a trainer who doesn't lose. Having Mustard introduce Leon and elaborate on their relationship would have been a far more meaningful introduction to Leon as opposed to just meeting Leon at a station outside your house. DLC is typically used to complement a game by expanding upon what has already been established. Sword and Shield's DLC is being used to complete the barren base game, bumping up the cost from 60 to 90, which is significant, and is a reason why people are taking issue. Sword and Shield are now the most expensive Pokemon titles in existence, costing more than double any past title, and it still doesn't even have all of the Pokemon. The cost is not proportionate to the content you receive. The DLC should have been free. Maybe then Sword and Shield would be recognized as competent and acceptable Pokemon Switch titles. There's another issue with regards to the additional 200 plus Pokemon that are returning in this expansion. Game Freak are putting out a free update to base Sword and Shield titles, which allows these 200 Pokemon to be compatible, but these Pokemon will still be unobtainable in-game, despite it being very easy to create spawn points for the additional Pokemon. However, that would incentivize people to not buy the DLC, therefore hurting Game Freak's bottom line. This means that the only way to get the Pokemon without resorting to purchasing DLC is to A. Trade someone who has the DLC themselves or has transferred them by paying for home. This would be trivial by the way if the GTS wasn't arbitrarily removed. Maybe they will sell it back to us in future DLC. And B. Pay for home and transfer them yourself. Yes, the 200 plus mons are technically free to get into a non-DLC title. 
but you have to go out of your way, scouring public forums until you find what you're looking for. Again, the GTS, something that has been a useful staple of the series since Gen 4 on the DS over 12 years ago, would have simplified this process, but I guess the Switch is just incapable, somehow. Other than that, the only way to access the Pokemon is through the paywalls, being the DLC and or Pokemon Home. Now is a great opportunity to address another issue that people have with regards to both Pokemon Bank and Pokemon Home. Pokemon Bank is, quite frankly, a scam. Each Pokemon is about 260 bytes, and you can store up to 3,000 Pokemon for a whopping 780 kilobytes for $5 annually. That's not even a single megabyte, which is only 1 1,000th of a gigabyte. To put this into perspective, Google Drive gives you 15 gigabytes for free. 15 gigabytes is the equivalent of 15 billion bytes, which makes up approximately 57 million Pokemon. The cost for this using the bank scam system is over 96,000 USD annually. Nintendo makes $96,000 off of storage that Google Drive gives away for free per person. But it's only $5! It's not that expensive. You're just cheap. Yeah, well if I shit on a plate and I sell it to you for $5, it's only $5, but you're still being scammed regardless. The only way to get your bros from the 3DS to your Switch is to buy into a scam. The cloud-based system of Pokemon Bank is seriously unnecessary. They could have just made an application where you could write all of your Pokemon to the SD card, it wouldn't take up even a single megabyte, and then connect the 3DS to the Switch wirelessly using some kind of infrastructure, like home, to move your Pokemon. This is how Game Freak did transfers in the past. From Gen 3 to 4, you needed to utilize Pal Park, which required you to have a Gen 3 game in the bottom of the DS and a Gen 4 cart in the top. This did not require a cloud service and was free of charge. You could also connect the DS to the Wii and send your Pokemon over to either Pokemon Battle Revolution or Pokemon Ranch for free. I see no reason why the 3DS couldn't do the same with the Switch. For Gen 4 to 5, you could utilize the Transfer Lab, but this required two Nintendo DS systems. Now let's talk about Pokemon Home. It comes out next month, but there honestly isn't much we know about it, which is pretty concerning. What we do know is a paid, cloud-based service similar to Bank. No price has been announced, but I'm sure it will be anywhere from 5 to 10 USD annually. Home is compatible with the 3DS games, Pokemon Go on mobile, and the Switch games. Transferring Pokemon is one way only, except for Sword and Shield. And that's basically it. There's so many unanswered questions like Pokemon capacity, or if Bank shares a subscription with Home. They did hint that Home will have some type of GTS capabilities, which is cool when you first think about it, until you realize Game Freak most likely removed the GTS from Sword and Shield to simply sell it back to you later on. Before we know it, we will need to pay for our Pokemon to follow us, or pay more for the verse recorder, so on and so forth. I wouldn't put it past Game Freak at this point. Which brings me to my final discussion topic, which is that people are equating Game Freak to EA due to all of their recent shady business practices. As much as I am not a fan of Game Freak, they most certainly are nothing like EA, yet. Game Freak have practiced a business model for the past two decades that essentially sells consumers the exact same game three times, with marginal differences between the three. This is obviously pretty scummy, and it's getting worse. For example, you see this Pikachu? This Pikachu is locked behind a $60 USD paywall. The only way to get it is by having a Let's Go Pikachu save file on your Switch. This Pikachu was used recently to win a tournament, hence pay to win. But Smash Bros DLC characters are also pay to win. Yeah, but Gigantamax Pikachu is more than double the price of all current Smash Fighters combined, and it's just for one form of one character. Don't forget this abomination. If you want both of these in your Sword and Shield game, it will set you back 120 USD. Not quite as bad as loot boxes, but it sets an ugly precedent. There's also a Mew locked behind a $50 paywall. Let's calculate the optimal Pokemon experience in 2020. Base game, DLC, two ugly forms of unevolved Pokemon. There's no better way to play a Pokemon game than with a Pokeball. And you must now also pay for online too. It costs almost $300 to play and enjoy everything that Sword and Shield has to offer. This is about 650% more expensive than past titles. Does the experience reciprocate that value? Hell no! Pokemon in 2020 is definitely not 650% better. It's arguably worse than it's ever been in a long time, which emphasizes the terrible state Pokemon finds itself currently. Anyways, let me know what you guys think down below. With all that being said, thanks for watching you guys.